And then we got what Luke reckons is the best TV match in AEW of the year. Yeah. I mean, you, you said it's top five, but... Nick Jackson and Ray Phoenix was this year. Was it this year? I'm pretty sure. You, t- you, you. I thought that was last year. I thought that was like last November or something. I'm willing to be wrong on that. because I, I mean, honestly, you could have said it was in February and I still would have thought that was last year. Oh, no. It was the 20th of November. Damn ah, it. No, yes, I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Bollocks. All right. Um, well, yeah, well, I'm, you know, maybe it's top four. Maybe this match is top four now. I'm not going to say I was right. I'm, I'm just not going to say I was right because that would be really big headed of me. Um, but yes, yeah, this was Butcher and Blade teaming with the Lucha Brothers to take on FTR and the Young Bucks. Man, it really feels like it's been ages since we've seen the Young Bucks on TV. I don't mm. know if that's right. But it feels like it's been ages since we've seen them in a match. Yeah, well, we see them a lot, don't we? Yeah. Um, but actually wrestling in the ring, it's quite rare. I think they wrestled three weeks ago on Dynamite in the opener. Yeah, and I think they've done, they've done stuff on Dark as well, because I think they had a match against Peter Avalon and the oh, no, probably Ireland's librarian and Brandon Cutler. Um, but yeah, this was just... I, and this, Do you know what this featured? There was a, a, a triple threat tag match um, a few years ago uh, in... Um, uh, NXT with the revival and Johnny Gargano and Champa and AOP. Yes. And Gargano, Champa, and Revival had this sort of like incredible feud between the two of them that led to Gargano and Champa picking up the belts, so DIY picking up the belts for the first time. And there's a moment during that triple threat match where the teams work together to take out the bigger AOP, including them doing the meet in the middle finish but it's like one member from diy and one member of the revival and one member from diy and one member of the revival doing the shadow machine and we got that in this match with ftr and the young bucks and i've written here they work together to do all the moves and it's everything i've ever wanted <laughs> i thought exactly the same i didn't get a chance to go into it in my video review earlier but yeah what what a what a great way to take that story and it's an interesting out of order approach because you know when uh diy and the revival did that in nxt it was at the end of a long big feud but here they're using that dynamic to almost start and and cultivate this rivalry and i i just i mean i'll skip to the end because i I do want to talk about the the post-match because i think it's really important with overall nick it's matt jackson accidentally kicks dax um yes it was yeah yeah i keep i still can't get dax and cash right um because they've changed their names but he super kicks dax by accident and that's what leads to matt jackson getting pinned now any other tag match feud they would sort of get in each other's faces afterwards there was none of that because ftr were like obviously a mistake and us as viewers at home are like well it's obviously a mistake and it is frustrating sometimes when the wrestlers can bust because of what is quite clearly friendly fire so to see that not then spark quite that would have been very lazy i think to use that to spark a a bigger feud between them and for them to just like shake hands in the ring afterwards yeah i love that understatement because the key to that is they were working as a well-oiled shadow machine leading up to that moment. Like they were a perfect eight-man tag group. Like well, you know, four men, uh, or whatever. Like they were, they were perfect foursome. They were working. Like there was that moment when they all just tagged in each other at the, you know, in sequence, so they could hit that superplex and the uh, the splash by Cash, and then the uh, Nick Jackson's um, shooting star press or four fifty or whatever it was. So they were working together as a well-oiled machine. It was just one errant kick is what led to their downfall. And they uh, and then the Lucha Brothers hit the the Lucha Driver on Matt to get the win. It was one mistake that led to their downfall. Amazing scenes. And I I wouldn't have predicted that was going to be the finish either. And I I thought it was all the better because of it. I, I thought it was so, so great. And we could talk about this match for a long, long time, I think, because we've only really covered one half of the ring. What we haven't spoken about is Ray Phoenix is back, everybody, and he can fly. He can literally fly. He has the superpower of flight. Yeah. 
and Penta's amazing as well. I thought Butcher and Blade looked really good in this, particularly the Butcher. Like they were, you know, they were the, the, the third wheel of the match, if you will. But I thought they were still like really, really good. They were elevated by the other teams that were in the ring with them. Man, have I missed the Lucha Brothers? Like, as you like, you know, obviously Penta because he's so good, but man, Phoenix was just otherworldly when he does his little like 619 thing and then steps back in and does his big whipping like kick he makes i mean randy orton can make fun of the leg slap all he wants i will ray phoenix does an incredible leg slap and i love it <laughs> yeah and uh, when nick and when nick and uh, nick jackson and ray phoenix just had a little tangle when they were in the ring together get up to the top rope like it's nothing hurricane runner off of that shades of that november match <laughs> i i and just incredible stuff and i genuinely it was like pentagon gets in the ring and dax is in there too and it took a few seconds for me to go is this happening like it's yeah. very rare these days that that kind of that feeling sneaks up on you when you're like this is actually happening pentagon and Scott Dawson <laughs> are in the ring and they're about to wrestle. And it really like, I, I'm marked out. Yeah. <laughs> like they're marked out in quite, quite a pure sense. I, I, I mean, you, there's a quite an easy way to, if you ever read my notes, there's a good way to know when I mark out. And it's when all, all of a sudden my notes go into caps. I just hit the caps key and I just start typing like, they're working together! <laughs> or as I've got here, oh my effing God, Phoenix just did a Canadian Destroyer onto everyone on the outside. Mm. And it was that moment when it was, yeah, Dax Harwood and Pentagon Jr. Are away against each other in the ring. And they're having a match next week. Lucha oh, Brothers yeah. versus FTR. Oh, it's a spicy meat of all and I cannot wait so so great i also loved as well um there were so many spots in this that i loved but in the the, the ftr and young bucks working together them doing the assisted pile driver but cash wheeler gets taken out so nick jackson does does it to help out but he does a melt to driver variation mm. nice attention to detail there nick and also just sort of separate to all the action in the ring who was shown watching in the stands Tully Blanchard oh, and yes. Sean Spears. And, you know, I think we all want it. I think we all want this FTR, Sean Spears, Cody Rhodes, Four Horsemen. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, oh. I'm really like someone mentioned it in a super chat a little while back. And I thought, you know, I, I think I want to see FTR on their own. Like, I just want to see, but you know, the more I think about it, the more that person was 100% correct. And I really, really want to see that team. Yeah, Cody, FTR, Sean Spears with Arn and Tully. Oh, it would be good, mate. Yeah. If we can't have Jim Cornette with FTR, this is the next best thing. Yeah. Um, the After that, we... <laughs> Jim, Jim Cornette is never working for AEW. <laughs> <laughs>